welcome everybody at PCR London Valve 2024. I'm Chiara Di Biase, interventional cardiologist in France, and we are here today to discuss about highlights about mitral. And I'm happy to have here the course director, Francesco Maisano from Milan, and Sam Dawkins, that is the coordinator track of the mitral one. So, Francesco, if you should highlight which are the evidence for you around mitral at this moment, what would you tell us? Well, you know, there has been a lot of new data this year around the mitral interventions. Uh, uh, one example, Reshape 2, has been uh, uh, an important trial with uh, new uh, highlights around this uh, pathology and the opportunity of treating patients with heart failure. So if I highlight one of the sessions that really has been important is the session which has been digesting the, the latest uh, trial evidence in this field. Uh, and there's been a very important uh, session involving the old st all the stakeholders, the heart failure specialists, uh, the interventionists, the imagers, and so on. Another highlight I have in mind, and obviously I bring my surgical background, there's been also some space for surgical uh, uh, sessions uh, particularly showing to the cardiology ca intervention cardiology community, showing the possibilities that we have as surgeons with minimal invasive mitral repair, which I think is an important uh, piece uh, for our patients. So strong evidence for the treatment of mitral. What about you, Sam? Which are your perspectives about science around mitral? So I think the highlight for me of uh, PCR London Valves have been the late breaking trial sessions. We've had some really good presentations. And just to pick out a couple in the mitral space, we saw the two-year data for class 2D randomized trial and registry and the two-year data for the my class reg registry. And what they have shown us is for comparing the two transcatheter edge, to edge repair devices uh, at two years, there's non-inferiority uh, for both safety and efficacy with a very good reduction in mitral regurgitation early after the procedure, but importantly, that's durable out to two years. I might just pick out the class 2D registry because that's, that's very interesting to me because that's looking at the patients with more complex anatomy like commissural disease, calcification, multi-segment disease. And that's what we see in the real world. And what that shows us is that edge to edge repair has good early results and good late results with meaningful improvements in quality of life. Okay, so perfect, but I think that people coming to this very Congress, they come for here about science, but they want to even know something more about practice. So what about you, uh, what do you think was the best novelty for practice at this Congress to the, this year? Well, so that's what I really like about PCR London Valves. It's a really practical Congress. You know, we have the big podium presentations, but we also have the chance to get hands on to learn about imaging and learn about the procedures. Mitral edge to edge repair is now a mature technology with a good data set behind it. What we need to do is expand it so that we can treat it in more parts of the world and treat more patients. And that's what we're all here for. We focus really heavily on imaging this year, and there's a real appetite from our audience to learn more about imaging, how to use it, how to optimize it when the imaging is challenging so that we can get the best results for our patients. So this was about practice on imaging. Francesco, can you tell us more about practice with Anson? Sure. Well. Uh... I would say that simulation-based learning has become uh, the center stage uh, uh, for many people coming to uh, PCR events and PCR long valves in particular. It is a unique opportunity overall to learn uh, the practical aspects of our, uh, our, our job. And we had a tremendous in, in, uh, improvement in uh, the educational offering specifically for mitral. Uh, we have done uh, sessions on uh, leaflet management, we have done sessions on transeptal puncture, hands-on sessions on new devices in parallel to the main arena where we have seen new devices being implanted in first in man procedures. Uh, we have seen those devices in the hands-on sessions where participants have been really in contact with innovation. And lately, I would say another highlight of this year has been a great innovation in the live cases. We had a, a TOE simulator on stage, uh, reproducing exactly the anatomy of the patients, uh, bringing simulation again back into the, uh, to the bedside. I mean, we really understand how simulation will help us through all the cycle of our uh, daily profession. So definitely, from uh, science to practice is the real strength of this PCR London Valve. Thank you very much to both of you.